Hi, I'm Jamie and welcome to Teachers Tech. Today I want to give you seven ways to use Copilot in Microsoft Outlook that will make you more effective. Just a couple things before we get started with these tips about using Copilot in Microsoft Outlook. You need to have either a work or school account that it's been enabled for. I had to purchase a license to add it to one of my accounts that I do these tutorials on. And then after I did that, then I have access to this. The other thing is I'm using the new Microsoft Outlook as you can see right here. So if you haven't made the switch, uh, you need to make sure you toggle that on. I do have different videos that will show you how uh, Microsoft the new Outlook works but you can log in online like this and then if you go through your Microsoft 365 account log into Outlook you're going to have to access to Copilot this way if you want to try it uh, these tips that I'm showing you here today. Tip number one is probably most obvious how do you draft an email in Outlook with Copilot. So if I go up top here to new as soon as I click on a new mail then Copilot appears in the ribbon. So I can access it right here. So if I drop down, I can go and draft with Copilot right here. Coaching by Copilot, I'll come back to that as a later tip. What I like to do though is just using the forward slash in the body here. And right here, we can click draft with Copilot. So what do you want it to say? So I already have something prepared. I just want to get this uh, email written for a team project and it has some time in there requesting feedback. Um, I don't have to give it this much information, but you can change uh, how you want. So if I go here and generate the options, look at, I can go direct, neutral, casual, formal, make it a poem. What's the length? So maybe I want this to be medium length. Once I pick these two different things between tone and length, I can go over to generate. So then it will create the draft. It doesn't send it. I get approval at that point. So here's the draft that it created. It took that information that I gave and it just made a message here. Now, is there anything I'd like to change? At this point, I could go through and ask it to change something. But if you like it, all you have to do is keep it. Notice you can discard or regenerate again. As soon as you keep it, you can go through at this time and make any changes to it. And then you're able to send it. You can see how this is going to be an effective use of time. So I got a response from the email that I just sent out. A couple people responded to with this with a little bit of information. You can see the thread here. Now you would think I would just jump to uh, how to respond with Copilot as a tip. Am I I am going to come back to that on my next tip, but look at this right here. Summary by Copilot. This will go through and sum up the information in these emails. So if you have a large thread, just by clicking summary here will give you that quick information to go through. And whenever you see one of these numbers, it will go to that specific email that you can read further on this. But again, this summary by Copilot will save you a lot of time. Now with that we've read the summary, let's go ahead and just close this and reply to everyone. Now I could go ahead and use Copilot to draft a suggestion here. Take a look at the very bottom. Now we have draft with Copilot. Do we want to confirm meeting agenda? Do we want to appreciate the feedback? Uh, all these different ones right here. And notice that we do have custom that we could go through and kind of do the same thing what I showed you uh, before. So let's use one of the uh, suggestions right here. I'm going to appreciate the feedback and suggest pre-meeting chat. So there's the quick response. If you like it, you can keep it and do all the different things that I showed you before. Let's keep it and I'm just going to go ahead now and send it back. Just before I move on to the next tip, I just want to ask you a question. What do you think about AI emailing AI here? So if they have Copilot, I have Copilot, and we're just emailing back and forth, drafting all these and responding, is it just an AI having conversation? Just think of how many people maybe aren't even paying attention to some of the emails. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. Tip number four is another big time saving tip. Now, this is about searching in Microsoft Outlook, and this will be a little different this time. I know we could go up top and use the search up here and I probably could find anything I need because I don't really have very many email messages in here. But I want to show you the power of Copilot. Now, not necessarily in built into Outlook here, but I'm going to switch over to my Microsoft 365 account. You can see I'm logged in here and I have Copilot selected. What I want to show you is that you can search your Outlook messages right from here. So if I was going to go and ask it something, so let's say I'm going to ask for uh, emails here from Ashton. So I'll say emails 
from Ashton about dogs, just like that. It will go through and give me searches, all that history through Microsoft Outlook. So look what it gave me here. It found on November 23rd, 2023, Ashton shared a file named dogs with Kathy. And I, if I need to go to that email specifically, what I can do is if I click on this one or just hover over it, notice I get a little bit more information here and it has this email link to here that I can go through to it. So this makes a very friendly way to be searching for emails and it gives you a little bit more information as you go through this method. So in tip four, I asked Copilot here to find a specific email that Ashton was connected to, and it did a great job and summed it up for me. In tip five, I wanna show you how you can rephrase this. This time, I'm asking, what has Ashton been involved in? So now, if I ask this question, Copilot will go through a number of different, it could be emails, documents, and give me a little bit of information, paint a picture of what Ashton's been up to. So as it comes through, you can see that it's kind of giving me this information. It could be from emails. And if I hover over any of these things, it shows me this part here where there was some things from a loop and this was a Word document and there's gonna be a number of emails too. And down below, I can dig a little bit further. So you can see here is one of the projects here that I can ask about that or can you show me the dog's PowerPoint in the presentation? So you can go a little bit further with Copa pilot even outside of Outlook with searching. So you remember the coaching tip that I talked about that I would come back to that? Well, I'm there now. So tip number six is the co-pilot coach here. Now, let me explain what this is. So I wrote this email here, but I kind of did a bad job on it. It's very abrupt. It's maybe a little rude and everything. Uh, I can use Copilot to help me write a message better. So if I go up top here, and I'm gonna to go to Coaching by Copilot. It's gonna analyze this email here. It's gonna review the tone, clarity, you can see all the things. And it's gonna help me maybe with some, some suggestions that I could rewrite it myself. So here we go. It's saying the tone could be more curious, uh, courteous and it gives me some suggestions in here. Now consider their perspective. And as I go through, I can take this information and then go back and then regenerate or re make these changes to the email that I wrote. So using coaching, and it doesn't have to be this extreme of the example that I showed you, but I just wanna show as you write your emails, take advantage of coaching in Copilot. Now I'm back in Copilot 365 for my final tip number seven. And that's about helping you schedule. So most of the things I've talked about so far is about connecting it to Outlook, but we can take a look at calendar as well. So let's try this prompt. I'm gonna review my calendar for next week for a four hour window suitable for a meeting with Kathy and Ashton. Now I don't have access to their calendar, so I'm gonna to have to probably follow up with this, but uh, you'll see kind of what I'm after. I'm gonna go ahead and send this. So now what it should be able to do is go through my calendar and see what times I have available and suggest maybe the best time for this. So here is the information that it came back with. They weren't able to access Kathy's and Ashton's calendars and I knew that was gonna happen. I'd have to change that. Uh, but it has three different time slots that it checked my calendars for where that four hour time slot would work in. So I like the way that when it kind of gives me the information, it kind of just writes it out in a nice way that it's easy to consume and kind of make that planning a little bit easier. So what do you think of these seven tips? Are you using it already? I'd love to hear what ways that you're using it that is saving you time. I'm gonna have more videos about using Copilot in other Microsoft 365 products, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching this time on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.